How's it? Welcome back. So here's an update to the remote viewing experiment I've been messing around with here lately. Now, this isn't going to be the big video where I share my results and try to come to a conclusion on the whole thing. But the past several days, as I've been digging into it, you know, it's been pretty interesting and it's kept my interest where so far I have a handful of attempts under my belt with, you know, a couple like pretty solid hits in there surrounded by a bunch of, I don't know, maybe that's a hit if I stretch it and then, you know, a whole bunch of misses around those. But it has been cool. My older son especially gets a kick out of it watching me trying to have superpowers as he's picking these random ass pictures for me to try and, you know, remote see. But, you know, I'm still like I'm in the I don't know land where prior to me looking at this stuff i was very solidly in the like hell no not possible land but you know maybe something is there i've been watching like a lot of these different podcasts and interviews and videos about it on youtube and stuff and like if some of the big stories that they share in a lot of these different videos if those are real as they described it you know the chances of being able to pull that off just getting randomly lucky seems crazy small to me so maybe something is there. Now, of course, they're sharing their like greatest hits versus all the tons of misses I'm sure they must have had. But, you know, maybe, man, who knows, right? Plus something else that's been crossing my mind a lot lately, a little bit off topic. But about seven, eight years ago, a friend of mine was having his son's first birthday and they're pretty much balling. So, you know, big ass first birthday party, tons of people, like over 100 people there raffles and they're giving away tons of prizes the grand prize was this big ass tv and a whole bunch of other cool shit so like we pull up and i'm like i was feeling them out i'm telling my wife i'm like babe we're gonna win tonight i'm feeling really lucky and so we get to our table and of course you know i'm kind of just mouthing off to all our buddies on the table and whatnot very first raffle ticket they pull out we win and once that happened i'm like dude i'm feeling it we're winning that grand prize we're, we're winning all this shit and then out of like the hundred or so people there, we won like four or five of the prizes. We won the first one for sure. We won some other kind of random stuff in the middle. And then the, the last grand prize, we won that shit. And like by the time it got to that point, cause I was talking so, so, so much shit by this point, like everybody was kind of looking and watching and boom, we got it. So I don't know what that was, but it was weird. Cause I had that feeling I knew it was there. And so, if that was real and not just me getting randomly lucky, feel, you know, feeling like I was feeling lucky and then actually being lucky and winning all that shit, you know, then, you know, maybe something is there. And if that's there, then maybe this whole remote viewing thing is there as well. Anyway, I got totally sidetracked with what I wanted to do in the video. So what I wanted to do for this video was go over my approach that I'm that I'm following, at least my current approach. I'll probably be making edits to this and stuff as I learn more about it. Um, to try to do this whole remote viewing thing. So I'm going with what I believe is like the standard four stage way of doing it, you know, eyes open, pen and paper in hand. So uh, somebody will pick a, a random image, right? So I've been having my son do it most of the time. And so um, he'll pick something, then he has to name it. And so we've just been putting numbers to it instead of like him giving me a name that might clue me into what it is or what he would actually do is give me like a name that's nowhere near what it is. And then that just might kind of get into my head and muck shit up. So. We just been going with a straight up random number, whatever numbers you want to put on there, that will be the target's name. Then on my pen and paper, I write down the target, followed immediately by like a quick ideogram, which is like a line or two quick sketch. You don't think about it, just whatever comes out, that's it, right? You just do a quick something like that. And then um, you start to describe like the feelings and something they call gestalt that goes along with the image in general, but you know, kind of at this stage more linked up to the ideogram and why you wrote it the way that you did. So, you know, feelings, whatever, happy, sad, openness, busy, doesn't matter, what, whatever you want to put there. And then gestalt, which I had to look up what that meant. So basically what they mean by that is like a general category of things. So like could be nature, life form, structure, land mass, you know, anything like that. And so that's stage one. Then in stage two, you want to give, you're, you're going to be writing out some more like words and shit, but it'll be like sensory impressions, right? So that could be things like the color, dimension, energy, temperature, sound, taste, smells, anything like that will go into that category. Then you have stage three, which is where you're actually starting to draw it out in more detail, not just the weird random squiggle you did for the ideogram, right? You draw it out in more detail. And then the last one is the stage four, which is refinement. And that's basically where you try to nail down and you know, maybe not, I mean, if you're really confident, you could describe it word for word exactly what it is. But, you know, you keep things kind of vague in a way, unless you're really sure about it, and you just, you know, refine everything up above it down to that final portion is to really try to nail what this image actually is. And, and that's it, you know, it's a fast, like, 
five, maybe like 10 minute exercise thing. Now something that, that did help, so like the little solid hits that I did have, I did notice that they actually did come when I was more, I wasn't thinking about it too much. So you basically gotta do open awareness, at least this has been my approach. You blank out your mind, and then you just see what pops up, and you try to catch that first thing without having influence on it, and that's what you write down on the paper. Then as you start thinking about it more, like as you get deeper into it, in the beginning it's kinda easier, because you, you're just starting out, right? You just write whatever, but then as you start writing out more, I start, it's harder to kind of quiet that thing in the back of my head that keeps wanting to just actually guess what it is versus it just kind of pop up on its own. So that's been neat. Um, uh, something else I've noticed too. So I've basically been doing it one of two ways. So like I'll either type in random image into Google or whatever, and then I'll pick a number like 47, for example. And then I got to scroll down the, the, the page until I find the 47th image, and that's what I'm trying to see. Right, and so I, went, I had better results with that. Now I think a couple things could be thrown in there, right? Because I see what the initial random images are that pop up on the screen right before I scroll down to find whatever the 47th picture is, I have a general idea of the type of imagery that they're showing, right? So I think that probably helped me do better with those versus when my son was picking it. Also, I think another big um, part of it, and this gets back to the whole open awareness meditation part, is when I'm doing it by myself on the computer, picking whatever number, right? It's quiet, I'm not stressed, I don't have my kids laughing at me as I'm trying to find these superpowers and whatever, right? Then when I do it with them though, oh man, it's, it's really fun, they get a kick out of it, but like it's distracting, it's hard for me to do proper open awareness and get my mind blank because, you know, the older ones laughing, my, my younger ones getting a kick out of it, my wife's cracking up at me. So, you know, it just makes um, a lot of distraction. But nonetheless, it, it has been a cool um, exercise so far. Oh, the other way, and this actually was interesting. So before I started learning more about remote viewing, I thought it was primarily done in like a deep meditative state, right? So when I think deep meditative state, of course, lucid dreaming would be one thing. But I'm thinking of like, you know, liminal dream, hypnagogic, getting down to close to stage one of sleep type work. And I'm very good at that shit. So that was the... That's what I thought it entailed more. Now there is a way of doing remote viewing that's more like that, which actually brings up um, Robert Monroe's gateway tapes. But maybe I'll save that for the next video. But um, you know, anyway, so there is that one approach. I have tried that one a couple of times, get into a really quiet state and try to see up, uh, try to see an image. The problem with that one though, is it just takes so much longer, right? I gotta get all the way down to that really stage one asleep state see what images pop up plus there's so many popping up that it's hard to tell which one it is you know that you actually want to take versus doing it this four stage way i get that thing done in like five ten minutes and you know easy anyway with that said um yeah that's it i'll keep you guys posted on my whole remote viewing experiment and until then keep your beliefs legit